Russ Winger, husband extraordinaire, will teach you how to build our cable rig today. This is fun. There he is. So our terminal connections, we're just using these hooks uh, available at any hardware store. Uh, I did take on both ends, I did take the channel lock pliers and close this down quite a bit. Um, once the cable's under tension, it's not a big deal, but you don't want to be having to run up and down the ladder. Um, just a standard 3 16 cable from the hardware store. Uh, I think we had a like a 50 foot roll or something, we only needed like maybe 30 feet. So uh, cutting cable is kind of tough, can be done with a hacksaw. Uh, you're better off with like a plasma cutter. Uh, bolt cutters don't really do the trick either. Um, but I'll show you a trick where you don't actually need to cut the cable. Um, this is the house or the, the side that attaches to the house. So when you buy a cable from the hardware store, uh, typically one end will come like this with a ferrule clamp uh, and a thimble. So you can use that part to attach to the house uh, or your upper end, whatever your upper end of the system is. Um, I've attached a block of wood and an eye bolt here uh, just to kind of cushion the blow from the, the pipe as it slides up the cable and try to protect uh, this sort of the, part of the connection. Uh, I had some springs and some washers and stuff around, so theory being it absorbs a little bit of that uh, shock. But anyway, this part attaches to the house. And we drilled into framing. Yes. Yeah. Yep, so that's going through the edge of the trim there into the actual uh, rim joist of the house. For the other end of the cable uh, that we used to attach to the other end of the yard, um, I have a set of swaging pliers and the right size ferrule. This one's actually for quarter, this is 3 16 but the idea is uh, you feed the cable through. Like that, you insert the thimble into here. This keeps the loop of the wire open instead of uh, letting it get a kink in it. And then with the swaging pliers, this one's, yeah, for 3 16 you would find, and you would, uh, these are too small for this ferrule, but you basically slide it on there and crimp it on the outsides and then the one in the middle. Like I said, this is the next size bigger. But you can see here, the 3 16 has, has been swaged in the three spots and that kind of clamps the cable. Um, if you don't have all of those tools, don't worry about buying them. You can buy this at a hardware store. It's just a wire clamp. Uh, it's used in like fencing repair. It's pretty neat the way it works. Uh, you would slide, so you don't actually have to cut your cable. You could slide your cable in to that little uh, gap there. And then the spring, when you apply pressure this way with your ratchet strap, it'll hold the cable uh, without kinking it. Cool. Called a wire clamp? Yeah, it's just called a wire clamp or a wire grip. Again, it's like you're gonna find this farm and ranch stores, they use them a lot for uh, repairing barbed wire fence and wire fence. So. All right, so for this part of the yard, uh, same thing as far as the, uh, the hook. So it's the same hook. This is, these are a little undersized, so you'd be better off to go with something a little heavier duty, maybe. Um, just your standard ratchet strap connecting there and either to your wire grip or uh, the end of the cable there. Okay, and then kind of get it somewhat close, take up some of the slack, and then make sure that you get a couple of rotations around so it doesn't slip on the axle. Um, again, same thing down here. We've attached a block of wood on just a tape stop to keep this from coming back and messing with our connection here. Um, for the javelin, this, this whatever this thing is. Our implement. Uh, yeah, for the implement, um, I had some steel, some spare scrap steel pipe laying around. You can use a piece of conduit from a, just your hardware store. You want probably a little bit bigger uh, than the... I don't know, I think they make, they probably make inch and a half. Uh, it's pretty cheap stuff, but, uh, and then just 
regular poly rope for uh, for the grip. You could probably put some glue or something on there to hold it in place, but um, just wrap it tight and then feed. Uh, use a piece of fishing line or like a narrow gauge line to feed the ends back in through you know like eight or ten wraps, and then twist it, and that should tighten them all up. I went the wrong way. Yeah. And there you go. There you go. Uh, it's important that you file down the edges of whatever you're using uh, so it doesn't rub and uh, fray the wire. Yeah, fray the wire. Uh, the cable's still going to be plenty strong, but these little, like the individual fibers, are pretty sharp if they break. You're so, filing down. Yeah, file down the inside and the outside as well. You don't want any like sharp metal edges. Um, but as far as critical tools, you'll need a hacksaw, um, obviously the wire, and a ratchet strap, and then everything else you can probably scrounge up. S scrap block and uh, the hooks. Borrow them from somewhere in the garage or buy a new ones. Cool. Thanks, Russ. Uh-huh. Maddie. Come here. This is your hey, this is yours. Look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also put a mat on the ground to throw on because I don't want to tear up my yard, but that's a totally personal preference. Train well, be safe. <laughs>